So with the Modern Warfare beta being open for all players right now, whether you're on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, or PC, or you had an early access code or not, you should be able to jump in and check out the game for what it is at the very moment. And over the last... 24 hours or so we've had quite a bit to talk about in terms of new stuff coming to the game starting first with what i think is my favorite addition to the beta that being ground war but we're gonna break down all this kind of stuff here what was changed what was updated as a result what you can expect if you jump in either tonight or tomorrow for the final full day of the beta so that said let's break it all down here for you starting late last night joe lemsley studio art director at infinity ward ended up making a little bit of a tweet that was kind of cryptic but was followed up with answers shortly thereafter with just a simple gif of get ready for a surprise now we knew today that we'd end up seeing ground war at some point but we didn't know that it would go live earlier and that it did late last night we ended up seeing ground war get introduced for all platforms and it's something that is a ton of fun i think this is the 32 v 32 game mode that we got showcased in the initial trailer for the beta what we ended up seeing talked about and leaked earlier before the beta we got a brand new map to house this game mode something that is absolutely massive five flags of domination not just your standard three like we're used to within all previous titles of call of duty and it is a hectic but ton of fun experience Personally, I think this is the best part of the beta so far. I was having a good time on the beta, but it definitely at times felt like I was struggling to do well. But I think that this map in particular, 32v32, allows for every single aspect of play. Whether or not you want to be that stay-at-home sniper that stays in the back of the map sniping, you can and you can do well. Whether or not you want to be that guy that rushes into all the action, you can and you can do well there. Whether you want to be that annoying guy up on the hill with a tank that just fires down on everybody, you can, I hate to say it, be that guy too. I think that this map in particular, this game mode of five flag domination, it allows for all styles of play to flourish and come out. So it makes for an interesting mix in terms of how the game will be played. And therefore, I think it brings not only some people out of their comfort zone because they have to check corners they may otherwise never consider maybe, or they end up wanting to try and win the game a little bit and see that with five flags, you got a little bit more action to go up against. So I think that this is just overall a ton of fun. You get awesome some things like helicopters, ATVs, and unfortunately, again, tanks. I haven't played around with many tanks being on the inside of them, but I have gotten taken out by quite a few while on streaks, so that's always fun. There, of course, are some things that, like a beta, you expect would persist, such as what I think are clipping errors if you end up trying to snipe somebody on the ridge lines, or in some locations, it seems like you're hitting your shot, but it's just not connecting. That might be something that is ironed out as the full game comes out, as more map work is done in that specific instance, but there also is things because of that distance, say for sniping, you do have to take into account some bullet drop, which is the first time that we've seen that outside of Blackout in a regular MP map, which is interesting. You have things like helicopters, which of course we don't see really ever within MP. We saw it in Blackout, but in very limited quantities. Then you end up having the ability to parachute. That's something that's new for MP as well. So there's a lot of stuff that definitely changes the dynamic of what you know in terms of Call of Duty multiplayer, but I'm all for it. I'm all for trying something new, and I had a lot of fun playing around with this one. You guys may very well think differently, and that is totally fine to each their own. I respect any opinion you may have thoroughly. But if you haven't jumped on, tried it out, I definitely recommend it. It's definitely something that you can get some nice streaks. I've gone on so many 20 kill streaks, haven't yet gotten that elusive nuke. The closest one I got, I ended up dying to a grenade through the floor, which is unfortunate, but it happens. I'm persisting on. I'm going to get one by the end of the weekend. Otherwise, I'm going to be a real sad espresso. Espresso depresso. Sorry, jokes aside, outside of that, we ended up seeing that the level cap was also increased. So that means that you're going to have up to level 30 from now until the end of the beta. I don't think they're going to raise the level cap anymore here at this. That was the rumored level cap overall from the very beginning. And right now, it seems likely given that we only had one level cap increase last weekend as well. So I wouldn't expect to go any further than 30. But with that, you get to experience a ton of things. Of course, you have what you had at the very base, like your M4A1, your MP5, that kind of stuff. But you also end up now, because of this rank increase, getting access to the FR556. You end up having the access to the Odin. You end up having access to the MK2 carbine or mark II carbine then you also end up having a handful of new streaks accessible as well depending on what level you end up hitting and by the end of level 30 you'll have access to the counter uav the wheel 
Hamilton, White Phosphorus, the Gunship, and the Juggernaut. Now, having seen firsthand experience of how the Juggernaut works, it is definitely something that you want to try out if you get to level 30. Though, to be fair, if you try it in Ground War, you might get taken out way faster than you may anticipate. Things like the Gunship I'm really interested in seeing as well. I personally didn't get to end up playing around with this one at the reveal event. I know that other people did. Seeing how effective things like the VTOL are, how effective the Support Helo and regular Attack Chopper are, I can only imagine that that AC-130 gunship is going to be some next level stuff also. And assuming you also have a little bit more of a flown out view compared to the attack chopper, whereas you can fly the attack chopper, it's a little bit closer, you get to see a little bit more of that field of view whenever you're in the gunship is my guess. So I'm definitely going to be putting that on once I rank it up and get through all of that. So I'm excited to see what becomes of that as well. Outside of that, the only other changes come in the way of playlists and what is in each playlist here for this. The NVG game mode has been taken offline that is no longer there you still have your game mode filters of tdm domination hq cyber attack 10v10 hq and 10v10 domination but you also end up having the reintroduction of gunfight osp which we saw on the alpha i think we saw it last week in the beta for playstation 4 if i'm not mistaken but i could be wrong on that one but that will include the maps of king pine and stack and then you of course have 32 v 32 ground war of karst river quarry so in the grand scheme of things there really wasn't a ton added into the game in terms of up dated contents but there was an absolutely massive one where it was added in so that sort of one and done update per se in terms of the newer content is definitely one that i think is substantial something worthwhile and that is definitely going to hold me over until the end of the beta and certainly want me to come back for more for the full launch of the game having seen how much xp you can get having seen how much score and how many more playstyles it accommodates and how many more streaks that I went on compared to, say, regular 6v6 and 10v10. I think that I might be exclusively playing some Ground War once the game drops. I'm very excited to see what else there is here at this. And of course, if we end up also seeing 50v50, that'll be absolutely nuts. But again, that was the stuff that was added today and last night with the update, but it's also not the only thing that was addressed by Infinity Ward here at this. They ended up in their blog post talking about some of the things they're looking into based off of community feedback, tweets, Reddit comments, YouTube comments, everywhere they've been looking that since the beta kicked off and stuff that has been introduced since then, they're looking into some bugs that are coming with this. Those sort of things include blurriness while ADSing or in matchmaking screens on PC. That's something that I've heard deals with the anti-alias Thing, but hasn't been something that can be just knocked out completely by changing the settings of that in PC. Crashes on Xbox One and PC. The inability for players to chat with console platforms while on PC. Players being able to change their input device mid-match. They deployed a fix for that during the beta, but they're monitoring it to make sure that that fix is everything they need it to be. Then for Xbox users, they ended up saying they're aware of bugs with invites and joining from the Xbox dashboard. It's being investigated and you can still send invites and join up from friends within the game just not from the dashboard there. They also ended up talking about the staying as a party after a match, where this is something that I have definitely run into a ton. You guys probably have as well. It seems to be, I think, one of the more global issues with this across all platforms, depending on where you're at, but where you'd end up playing a game, and then as soon as you finish up, it would try and perpetually find a match, but never join you into one, to which the fix for this previously was to disband the party, then rejoin up, and then match make again, which again, isn't anything that's tremendously game-breaking, it's just kind of a pain in the ass. This issue still persists, but they're still monitoring it, looking for it. And of course, I'm assuming it's going to be fixed out by the full launch. I can't imagine that that is something that goes unscathed until then. But for now, with only a day and a half left of the beta or so by the time you watch this, I don't know if I necessarily expect a fix to be coming as of, say, tomorrow morning or anytime tomorrow evening before the beta ends up rounding into its final couple of hours, but that's something that they still are aware of and you may see persist. I do think that it is something they've gotten it at least a little bit better where it's hit or miss, where I will jump into some games with a party afterwards, but I also won't at the same time. So just depends, I guess. It's kind of dodgy. But the final couple of things they ended up mentioning are talking about spawning, how they're still investigating spawns, trying to make them better, and especially on 32v32. Granted, we only have about 12 hours, 24 hours, depending on how long you've been playing it, of feedback to give. That's something that some of the spawns from the preliminary testing and basis are less than ideal. We'll say it that way. There are definitely times where you can watch players spawn. I know that in the buildings overlooking C, depending on what corner you're sitting in, they will spawn directly in front of you, meaning that you can definitely abuse that system. So that'll be fixed out, I imagine, here by the time that the full launch comes and maybe even as of tomorrow. 
though not going to get my hopes up too much for an immediate fix on that and the final thing being that voice chat has been inconsistent when joining with other players on other platforms so that overall is being investigated as well since that's more so a call of duty thing now not necessarily just party chat for playstation 4 and xbox one but that said, that is the update. That's everything that was added in today, everything that is being investigated, and anything in between. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you guys enjoying Ground War? I know that I absolutely am, but I'm sure that's probably attracting a decent bit of differing opinions. So whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Love to get your thoughts on all that, but hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare throughout covering the final hours of the beta coming tomorrow and then on Monday. Day. We'll be launching into Black Ops 4's final operation, and then onward as we get ready for the launch of Modern Warfare. So, if any of that stuff interests you, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best place to get Kevin Maxed on YouTube. Probably live on both those. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. But all that's said and out of the way, thank you guys all so much for watching. My Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.